welcome to this week's episode of Earth Talk. We're here in the UN in India office here in New Delhi. And with me, my guest today is Ms. Shuka Noda. She is UNDP's India representative, resident representative yes. here in India. So if I can start, ma'am, by just asking you, you made a trip to Ladakh. Yes. And I know that UNDP has as its mandate the eradication of poverty, dealing with issues such as equity, justice. So how does protection of the snow leopard fit in with this? Well, thank you very much for the question and also invitations to this very interesting talk. Uh, Ladakh was so beautiful. Bahar, you said you also have been there. Mm -hmm. The landscape is beautiful, but also very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was impressed with the, the resilience of communities. Yes. Uh, the, the weather is so hot mm. and uh, the income opportunities are very limited, mm. but they're extremely um, committed to protect environment, protect uh, snow leopards as well, mm. because they do see snow leopards as a treasure. Mm. Mm. Before uh, they considered it them uh, snow leopards as a as a threat, because they are the ones uh, who attack their uh, livestock. Yes. But they have also seen the, the income opportunities behind us here. Uh, it's it's above uh, four thousand meter mm. altitude, and it it was a very small community. Mm -hmm. uh, there they have, they, they said that they, it's okay. So Rumbak is the best uh, spot to cycling uh, snow leopards in the world. Were you able to see any snow leopards? No, no. Oh, in, in my heart, I saw one, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a bit far. Um, but they, they, consider, so they consider snow leopards as a treasure because uh, snow leopards actually bring tourists right. there. So they set yeah. up homestay and they also sell souvenirs of snow mm -hmm. leopards. So when uh, they started to see that they have to uh, cohabit with snow leopards. Mm -hmm. And snow leopards are also very important to check the health of, of the ecosystem. Yes. yes. And what, uh, what is UNDP doing over there? What kind of projects do you have so at the snow leopard um, site? Well, uh, just to give you an idea, UNDP is not focusing on just one sector, like for example, mm. health or education or environment. We look at development challenges holistically. So uh, for us, environment and people mm. are inseparable. Exactly. And in the end, we would like to see uh, that no one is left behind mm -hmm. by 2030. Mm. So uh, naturally, when we, we look at their income opportunities and so on, protection of environment, therefore yeah. uh, protection of snow leopards, Come, come together. So we work with the government because they are the ones at national level and state level and in district. Because they are the ones who set the, the legal system and so on. India is also leading within the 12 countries where snow leopards have um, lived. Yes. Have to set the yes. protocol and so yes. on. So at the international and national level, uh, we work with the government, but um, unless we work with, with communities, Hmm. Um, you know, tangible results will not come. So uh, we Got work it. with all levels to make sure that uh, in the end, by 2030, no one will be uh, left behind. No one is left behind. And it's interesting that you mentioned that actually you work not just in one country, but there is a program for networking right. in all the range countries of the snow leopard. Hmm. Why in the case of this particular species, does one need to work with other countries? Mm -hmm. So uh, snow leopards are, um, live in 12 countries, mm. India, uh, China, Russia, mm. and Central Asia yes. countries. And right. it's very difficult to trace, trace them. Right. They're uh, dispersed, landscape yeah. is so vast, yes. as like Ladakh. So it's very important that uh, it, it's a cross-border mm. project, and mm. that's where uh, we can only trace uh, how they are mm. living. Mm. Um, for the moment, they are between 4,000 and 7,000 snow leopards living in yes. these 12 countries. Yes. And in India, we think around uh, 500 plus um, or, or less. And it's right. very important, not only one country uh, protects snow leopards because they move yes. very much that uh, 12 countries right. have right. to come together. So leopards don't know boundaries, as they say, <laughs> political <laughs> yeah. boundaries at least. Right, right. And you, in your blog, said that you're a cat person. Oh, yes. <laughs> And you went to see the snow leopard yeah. and you said you couldn't see it, but you did come across a rescued one. Describe to us that. Yes, that uh, it was a three, three months old cub. 
<laughs> but it was pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> and they, I mean, he was abandoned mm. by his mother. Right. So uh, the, the wildlife department rescued him. Mm. He cannot go back to the, <laughs> the wild because uh, he, he, he cannot learn by now on how to hunt and so on. Yes. So we are keeping him in a big cage, mm -hmm. like, like this size mm. cage, and he just moved. We, yeah, we, we yeah. just uh, helped the, the state government to, to set up that, that cage. Right. Um, yes, it's, it's sad to see that he mm. cannot, but uh, I hope that he can mm. be part of our advocacy efforts right. to show that it's very important to protect snow leopards. So stepping away a little bit from snow leopards, mm. because I know the UNDP in India has a huge mandate. You have 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, uh, UN Environment also recently brought out this report on, you know, the gaps as far as commitments to combating the climate crisis are concerned. Um, how bad is it? You worked in several countries before. How bad is it? And what does the UNDP in particular do to deal with this crisis? Mm -hmm. um, it is bad. Before coming here, I was in Maldives. Mm -hmm. And we all talk about sea level rise. Mm. Uh, people probably cannot really imagine what it is like, but I have seen with my own eyes, mm. and I have spoken to those community people, island people, mm. that the, the coastline is mm. eroding and coming close to the, the extent that they have to move away from the original house yeah. to uh, go to the more inland um, yeah. space where they can find, they mm -hmm. can build mm -hmm. a house. Um, I also dive, so mm -hmm. I'm very, very keen to know what's happening underwater. Yes. Uh, there are less uh, <coughs> fish. Uh, I have also seen the coral bleach mm. with my own eyes. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it really affects once coral is uh, is gone and then it's less fish, that means that they the cannot... The marine yes. ecosystem has yes. collapsed. Yes, exactly. And they live also on uh, tourism. So if they don't have any fish, I mean, you have less fish underwater, that means that they attract less mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Also in India, uh, I think more than 300 million people live in harmony with the environment. They are their main livelihood depends on the environment. Mm. So if this is affected, and since this is affected, it mm. is a serious issue. Mm. Um, the climate crisis, we call it, um, we don't see it every day. Yeah. Yeah. But it, when we think of the the weather pattern for the past 10 years or so, uh, it, it's changing. And were you able to witness some of that in Ladakh as well? Because mountainous regions, for instance, yes. they're saying are going to be the most vulnerable. Yes, I think there's, uh, the glaciers is, is melting. Um, and then again, the snow leopards, um, mm. the way of living also mm. is changing. Mm. So, uh, so it's there. And then mm. that is also... Um, coupled with man-made um, damage towards the environment, like, you know, the plastic waste yeah. and so on. Yes. So yeah. we really have to think uh, what we can do mm. as individual, as government, as international organization like UNDP. Yeah. Yes. So Ms. Loda, thank you for speaking to us and all the best with your big cat. Uh, you know, I hope you get to see many more of them in the wild. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.